Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's podcast show. I am delighted. We are going to have so much fun today with my next guest. He is Mohanad, and I will let him introduce himself. But if you are on social media and like to laugh, this is your guy. Creative, talented storyteller who brings so much positive energy to the internet and to our lives. He understands comedic timing, cultural relevance, digital platforms, and I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Hello, Mohanad. Thank you, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Hello, how are you? This is our second time meeting. We yes. met at the Beyonce concert. Got to drop that in there somehow. But <laughs> we, we just started, man. We I know, I know, I know. But I'm like, you know, I was going to meet you for the first time tonight. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, I yeah. saw you at the Atlantis. And I'm like, hey, it's me. We're having the show together. <laughs> and um, he was, uh, you were dancing to Madonna. No, you were yeah. dancing to Beyonce. <laughs> What a fun night that was. It was, a, it was an amazing weekend. It was an amazing weekend. What a show. I know. I mean, when they first announced it, uh, that, that Beyonce will be performing, I shared it on my story and I'm like, who do I need to beg? And then they saw it and they invited me because I'm like a Beyonce fanatic. You're part of the Beehive? Of, of it, almost the leader. No, no, the no. Leader. I wouldn't say the leader because I've been to Beyonce concerts and I've seen people camp outside. I'm like, okay, there's, there's people that definitely deserve the leader leader position more than me well she put on an epic performance she did i loved how she weaved in arabic culture like was, from her outfits um kalsum fairuz the mayas from lebanon it was so even with her vocals like she did some arabic riffs and stuff it was it was amazing it, when when even before like when she, she uh, this is gonna turn into a beyonce episode, episode. coming to you live <laughs> Even when she started, she was always obsessed with Arabic scales and stuff. So, yeah. It's very, very cool. So, yeah. I um, want <clears throat> to introduce my audience to you. Cool. Um, I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank you And so actually, much. Lara, Lara, who's listening, loves you. And I told her we're going to talk to you. So, we have to do a quick video or shout out for sure, her at sure, some sure. point um, <laughs> for today. But let's start with, like, your story. Tell mm -hmm. us about your early life. Introduce the audience to who you are. How did you get to where you are today? Just tell us the story. Cool. My name is Mohanad of Syrian origins, born in Abu Dhabi. And then I've always, always loved uh, making people laugh um, in school. The girls mostly got my humor more than the more than the boys. So even though the classroom was like separated into two sections, boys and girls, I always my, my best friends were girls. So I like cheated and sat <laughs> next to them and and uh, just always uh, made them laugh they made me laugh as well but yeah, i've always loved making people laugh and dancing just performing arts in general and so when i got to university i i did my bachelor's in uh, american university of Sharjah, and they had a they had theater like as an Classes. as an elective yeah. and n now it turned into a major but it was an elective back then and it was like my first introduction to like any sort of stage performing and so i started first with choir that was the first thing um because i love to sing i love to dance and then we we got into musical theater which was just so 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 amazing and even after my free electives were done i continued to just vo i volunteer as tribute you know yeah i'll be on stage yeah i don't care if it takes six more hours of my day it was like even we used to spend 10 hours it was just so so enjoyable um and then after that was done i went to london to do my master's but i actually just wanted to go to london yeah um and so when i was doing my master's there that's when vine uh started, started. back in the day yeah and back back when i started instagram did not have videos yet it was youtube and vine yeah and i youtube was was my main source of entertainment and then vine came which was incredible amazing. and it and it had a uh, some editing tools that made it very easy for you to edit and, and stitch like different scenes together. Together, yeah, it was great. Yeah, and so, and also creatively, it was a lovely challenge to tell an entire story in just six seconds or even less. So I started on Vine and that was the beginning of my social media career. And then I, it started, I, I started in English, it was doing well, but then I did an, a video in Arabic and the first video I did in Arabic 
Went viral. Went viral. It was massive. Yeah. And then I decided to switch to Instagram because most Arabs were not were not on Vine. I'm and Vine. If, and I'm going to do Arabic content. Um, so I switched to Instagram. And then the first video I did on Instagram went viral in Egypt. And it was easier, a, a bit easier back in the day because the term influencer didn't even exist when I started. A hundred percent. And so it picked up and I just never stopped since. It was it's 10 years now. 10 years. A decade. I, so many of my friends from Egypt forward me your videos. Like, they're like, you have to see the the ones that you you dub Oprah's voice, like Oprah and Gail having a conversation. Or I don't know what, you make fun of everything in the most delightful and charming way. Thank you. Or you just in stitches laughing over it. But really what you're very good at is telling stories. <clears throat> and and how do you use comedy to tell stories? Like, how do, what's your creative process like? You know, I get asked, like, how do you come up with, with ideas? Yeah, how do you come up with that? And it's that? the most boring answer. As I'm falling asleep, it comes to me. I have to wake myself up, really? write, write it down on my phone, and then film it the next day. But also a lot of ideas. Back in the day when I first started, when it was mostly character-based comedy, um, I get inspired by things that I've seen. When I used to visit Syria, for example, for my Syrian character, things when I... Um, for my Emirati character, things that I used to see from Emirati girls at Starbucks in my university. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the earliest jokes about Hassa was like, if she doesn't have six Cartier bracelets, you know, like, yeah. what, what are you doing? What are you, you know? doing? So I've, I, I've seen these things in, uh, around and, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of observational comedy. That's back in the day. But now a lot of inspiration um, is, bro- uh, is from being an audience member mm-hmm. to these social media the <clears throat> channels and so yeah i spend a lot of time i definitely spend more time as a user than a content creator yeah so to create content you are a good listener you see yes. what people are posting about you see what's trending you're exactly. looking at culture and you're finding inspiration from reacting to things that you see correct exactly like one of my latest videos which i i posted this week which did uh, which did really well was there's a there was a trending video going around of miss university uh, miss university miss, miss universe. universe yeah they're screaming their their countries did you see that yeah 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 yeah. and so i did miss middle east and i did and because i i like to do different <laughs> dialects i did it like miss lebanon miss syria and so yeah yeah you, you it's it's best if you take what's going on right now or something that's trending and put your own twist on it yeah, like yeah. Uh, I, I I saw somebody dubbed the other day like a conversation between Harry and Meghan. It was just hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about finding your voice in this market. Obviously, you're a comedian. You're using content on social media to tell stories and really make people laugh in a world that's quite negative and yeah. has a lot of bad comments. Do you have to like think about censoring like, oh, if I do that, people might cringe or it's taboo or do you just like authentically put it out there and not have to think about social implications and stuff like that. Yeah. I definitely have this like internal war going on because I'm so like one of my biggest pet peeves nowadays is how hypersensitive people are. People are. And, um, I want to be part of like breaking that, like leave some room for, for comedy, for some offensive jokes that, really are not offensive you know what i mean it's like, comedy at the yeah, end of the day like yeah. you're supposed to be entertainment exactly like if if someone because I, I in my egyptian characters um i speak a funny way of english egyptian so you could easily <laughs> be offended. Or be yeah so you could be easily be offended by that but if i do for example a a French accent, like an English French accent, nobody gets offended by that. You know, it's just because it's just in your head that if you, if an Arab doesn't speak English well, then it's bad. But if a French speaks English with a French accent, nobody says anything. Nobody thinks of it this way. So I try as much as I can to push. And, but I also, I am cautious because it is the time that we live in, you know? Yeah, of course. So I do think about that. Like the, the miss, um, Middle East one that I did before posting it, uh, I did a Miss Morocco and I'm speaking gibberish because it's how Moroccan... They speak so difficult to understand It's, it's a different Arabic. language. It's a different language. It's, it is. Yeah, it really and, is. And I, I had a feeling that some Moroccans might take offense to it. And, and they did, they you did. know? Not all of them. Yeah. But I could have easily put in effort and learned a sentence because each one just had a sentence. But it was just a comedic choice to me because it's like, it's, it's a different language to me. So this is how I want to portray it. 
So, and I still did it and I still kept it. Um, so I try like to push a little, but, but not too much. And I, and I, I hope, Everyone know not I hope like everyone that truly truly knows me I don't have any ill intent like why would I you have no bad intentions why would um, I what do I have against any country yeah you know like why would I want to offend you and also sorry if I'm over no keep talking going. yeah no, good um, the people that get offended like that got offended over that for example like they have no problem laughing at when I'm making fun of Egyptians or when I'm making fun of uh, Lebanese or Lebanese. like any or any uh, other country, other yeah. but you can't make fun of our country why like. That, that, that's so unfair you know it's all fair game we all have something to make fun of like in the same, same video i'm syrian and the syrian woman that i portrayed was just Obnoxious. a mess yeah, she's yeah, a she mess was terrible. <laughs> and so you have to look that i'm making fun of myself and my people before making fun of everyone else and so that should help you not be offended by anything that i put out how important is laughter in our lives it's everything. I mean, in my life, it's 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 very very important. I base friendships on it. I base lovers on on humor. I base uh, my source of entertainment on it. Um, so yeah, to me, it's uh, very 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 important. What do you um, when you're looking at your videos and ones that perform well? What are you looking for, or how do you know if a video did well or uh, a, a skit was really well received? Besides views, obviously. Usually, you can tell in the first three minutes really the first three to five minutes will tell you exactly how the video will do um if i well according to my following if i reach like a hundred comments in five in five minutes then the video is going to do really really well okay good um but sometimes i record a video and i'm like oh this is going to do so well and then it's just uh, so disappointing it's so it disappointing doesn't. and it also messes up with your uh, like you stop knowing what's going to do well anymore. So you just do what you do and just hope, hope for the best. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the things, and I spend a lot of time talking to people about content and social media is like, don't overthink it mm -hmm. and just create for the purposes of creating. And, and you can't really predict how it's going to do. Like the definition of a virus or a viral video is you can't control it. Yeah. So you don't really know how it's going to do. And like, if you think something's going to perform well, the next day, Moods change, cultures changes, algorithms change, and yep. it just there's no way to predict it. Yep, the algorithm thing is very very important. They keep messing with with the algorithms, and I don't know what. So lower your expect, have no expectations. <laughs> That's a good, really do good your, advice. Actually, yeah, do your best. It, not just when it comes to content creation. Honestly, everything in life. Like even when I was uh, invited to the Beyonce thing. I didn't allow myself to get excited. I'm like, I'm gonna only going to get excited when she's right there in front of me. Yeah. Just in case something happens, you know? Um, so yeah, I would say have very low expectations in life, in everything. And that really helps you succeed. It's a surviving mechanism. What is uh, your favorite, like where did your inspiration come from? Like favorite TV show or favorite comedian? Like how, who inspires you? Oh my God. Um... Favorite TV show, I would say like a comedy TV show, The Office is on repeat. Of amazing. Mindy v Kaling's genius. She is. Veep is also like Ooh, a show. Ooh, love that. Oh my God. So Julia Veep Louis is Dreyfus so good. is just something else. Yeah. Even Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, I, I, love, I love that show. Oh, that's such a good show. That's it, not on anymore. Yeah, unfortunately. I thought it was genius, but it's so, so good. Did you watch Never Have I Ever? No, what is that? That's another Mindy Kaling. You have to watch it. Ooh, I've heard good. of it. Okay, it's okay. really good. She's, okay. Anything she does, I consume. I know, and like, she looks great. I, I saw her recently at an interview. She looks, she she's looks amazing. amazing. Yeah, 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 she's amazing. She's yeah. like, I want to meet her someday. Like The yeah, only celebrity that I want to meet in life is Mindy Kaling. Anyone <laughs> knows Mindy Kaling, can I me to her i just it's the one person and if anyone knows beyonce please let me know you you did just uh, see her on stage it wasn't enough you know i feel like it's it's better to watch beyonce on tv than than live because live she's like right there but you can't touch her or like talk to her or something you can't be dancing around in your in your living room yeah but i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm greedy i would love to meet her i wanted to ask you about um process the process the comedic process mm. If someone tells you, you know, I want to do what you do, Mohanad, give me some advice. What's the process I should take? What's the path I should take? What would you tell them? Um, you know, when when I do my content, like when I started, for example, I it, I didn't really have like, okay, one, two, I did what came to my, came to head, you know? Mm -hmm. But I would say one of the, uh, which I already mentioned is 
be an audience member. That's one of the most important, important things. Before starting, during, like all the time. Yeah. Spend as much time as you can. Like sometimes I, 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 I don't feel like going on social media, but I'm like, go, you'll never know what can inspire you, what can... And it it does happen <clears throat> all the time. Let's talk a little bit about being an audience member. Yeah. What does that mean? It consume content or watch, watch. Yeah, just watch, scroll, watch, see what's see what people are into these days. See what I mean. I'm I'm talking especially if you want to achieve longevity in this career. Yep, you're gonna have to be an audience member for a long, long time. And and what happens when you think about? rejection, people not liking your videos, negative comments. How are you handling that? You know, any, anything negative in my life, I like use logic to beat it, you know, which is like, uh, for, for example, the negative comments or people that don't like my humor. Mm-hmm. Like I'm no better than anyone else. Like every single person has that. So why would I, why would I be different? Like to me, for example, Beyonce again, she's perfect to me. You know, she's beautiful, she's talented, she's sweet, she's very hardworking. She gets so much hate, even from her own people. Like, she gets so much hate. So, yep. so to me, like, when someone that to you is, you idolize, gets so much hate, so then it makes sense that you'll, you'll get hate as well. Everybody gets hate. So uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't get to me. Well, of course, sometimes it stings a little. But I think it mostly stings because it's like a reminder of the world that we, we live in, you know, that there's people out there who have such courage when they're hiding behind their phones and stuff. Um, so that's the that's the part that stings, but it doesn't do anything to my self-esteem or or to to like motivate me any less or anything like that. Confidence. Where do you get your confidence from? Um, I'm, I'm really close to my family, so I have a really good foundation and also ever since i can remember i've always have i've always held so many debates in my head which is what i said like about every negative thought um i always believed that happiness is a choice Um, and so every time i i had a negative thought i just i just i just fought it i fought it with debates and i'm like no this way this way and it was like a two-way conversation between me myself and and I until until I found that logical spot that made me feel comfortable and and, uh, and uh, safe. Speaking of safety, what is something that you want to do that is out of your safety comfort zone? <gasps> oh my God, I'm so used to like my bubble of social media, which is filming at home alone. <laughs> you do? You film everything at home? I film I film uh, everything at home alone, except like sometimes I've had like some collaborations with, like, for example, with Amazon where we had to shoot in their factory and stuff. But um, in general, I shoot uh, everything alone. I do miss the stage. So, like, something like a one-man show or a stand-up show would be amazing. Have you done stand-up comedy before? I haven't, but I hosted a stand-up comedy show in Qatar, and uh, um, I I had to deliver jokes in the beginning and between each uh, comedian, and it was was, was quite quite the thrill is really, it scary oh it's quite the thrill you yeah, loved it it was scary but like the 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 nerves and the adrenaline uh, put words in my mouth that otherwise i wouldn't have been able to come up with uh so it, it really uh, it drives you it really does so it was it was exciting what about acting acting i'm getting into right now i was just in beirut we filmed the pilot for our tv show i don't know if i'm allowed to say that but it's not picked up yet but <laughs> hopefully uh, uh they're going to use this pilot to to see who's going to pick it up and then if it does i'll be doing a tv show soon rapid fire questions favorite actor in a global actor not necessarily comedy just like anybody that you get uh, i want to say a cheesy answer, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep? That's yeah. such a great answer. Why is that cheesy? Because she's everyone's favorite. She's you know? amazing. She's amazing. Kate Blanchett as well, someone that I just like get so excited when I know. She's so regal. Every time I see Kate Blanchett on like a red carpet, I'm like, wow. She's always so well put together. I Plus, know. she's an incredible actress. Incredible actress. Yeah. Uh, comedian you've always wanted to meet? Mindy Kaling is one. Hey, she's mine. Okay, okay. So back off. All oh, right, all oh, right, all oh, right. A comedian that I would like to meet. Why am I blanking? Steve Martin, I love. Martin Steve, Short. Love. These love. Two, these love. Two are amazing. Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Ooh, Conan O'Brien. 
Love Conan him. O'Brien. Love that guy. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah, yeah. Did you do you watch do you watch like those American late night TV shows? I, I used to watch a lot more. I feel like they're becoming a little bit dated, don't you feel? Yeah, like, yeah. The, the, the television that. in general, I think in general, is like declining. That's why yeah. the internet is so important. Favorite YouTube show or channel? Well, it used to be, there was a show called uh, uh, Gourmet Chef Makes. Really? I never yeah. heard of it. Even though I never cooked a day in my life. Even though you never cook, you like to watch cooking shows. That's that's totally Love. ID, normal. <laughs> yeah. Love it. But there's this gourmet chef who was like... Uh, uh, a Har- a Cor- a Cordon Bleu and then Masters in Harvard uh, and then she goes on this show and does Doritos but gourmet you know like from love, all real love yeah but then the, the channel Bon Appetit uh, which is took it over channel. and ruined it no they, they, <laughs> they during COVID you know like every everything came out during COVID like they cancelled Ellen and stuff so they cancelled Bon Appetit because they realized that all their shows the, the hosts are, are white and there's no uh, diversity diversity and so she left uh, Bon Appetit, and uh, now she has her own show, which is still enjoyable, but not as much not as the this same. one. Uh, TikTok or Instagram? Is Instagram watching? <laughs> <laughs> Depending on who's watching. Okay, you we know, can do a cut Instagram and a cut TikTok. No one will know the difference. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on who's watching. Are you, wait, not about posting, but even like as a platform, which one are you like more in love with? You know, before it was Instagram, then it became TikTok. But now recently, I'm I'm confused. Snapchat? Because, I thought you were going to say Snapchat. No, no. It's Snapchat I'm just getting into now. It's huge in Saudi. I know. That's why. And I, and like, it's massive. They, can't be, they also started something. Because you know how TikTok had the videos and then Instagram got the reels. Mm-hmm. And then they added YouTube shorts. Yeah, yeah. And now Snapchat has Spotlight. So oh, yeah. they've all adapted that TikTok format. Yeah, yeah. And it's and a, it's effective across y- all the platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Facebook stories are doing very well. Yes. Underpriced attention, mm-hmm. 100%. So I'm posting the same content on Snapchat as well. But yeah, I would like for the social media channels to, to take more care of their of their Of creators. their creators, Definitely. if they're creators. What would you advise? What's missing? Well, uh, Enhance the algorithm, make it in favor of the of the creators. It used to be so much be- so much easier to gain followers, uh, not even collaborating with anyone, just just doing your own thing. It was so easy to be to to have visibility in the market, but yeah, it's becoming more and more and more difficult. Are you into any of this Web three metaverse NFT AI no, digital avatars? Uh, no idea. What do you think about it? I don't think about it because it's hey. just it's just you know like. It's just not a passion of mine in w- whatsoever. Like anything technology, I'm, I am freaked out by the AI stuff yeah. recently. Like, it is have you heard of Chat G- GBT? Yeah, that's creepy. Yeah, Microsoft just bought them or invested in them. Oh, really? They're like, yeah, they're going to turn it into like a tool. I saw yesterday that Chat GBT can now pass the bar exam and the doctor. Oh my like, God. A, you can get like a medical. It can do anything. How are they? Like, how are they going to monitor, monitor that in schools and stuff? Like, how, they better... Papers, writing your papers, your theses. They're going to have to invent, like, a program. They didn't have the internet back in the day, and now it's, like, winning a bar exam. Crazy. That's crazy. It creeps me out. Also, there's AI for, like, creating art, paintings, and stuff. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous. The creative is really, really good. It's gorgeous work. Yeah. What were your uh, goals for 2023 and New Year's resolutions for 2023? You know, as, as I said, uh, I, I live life with zero expectations. Good. That's a great policy. And so I try not to plan much. I, I try to just do my best and see where it takes me. Um, I've just always been like that. But I hope that the TV show that we filmed picks up and, and does well. Just because I've been doing social media for 10 years. And it's definitely... I'm I'm still enjoying it. I'm I'm still motivated, but it's definitely time to for me to do something different, just different. just for my excitement, like creative excitement. So that I, I I do a lot of work with people on their personal brands. Mm. So like your brand name is your name, Mohanad. Yeah. Do you think about like where you want to take your brand, or how you position yourself, or what opportunities do you want for yourself? I I don't know. I I do get many thoughts on many days of of uh 
going back to hiding and just to a business stuff. But really? It's, it's well, not me though. But what kind of business stuff? Like what you have ambitions and dreams, right? Like yeah. what, what, what were you doing before this? What business stuff would you like? So I finished school. I finished my master's and immediately uh, went into comedy. I went into social media. Social. I took, I took a year off after my master's. I told my parents I've been studying all my life. I want to focus on, on making videos and they've been very supportive uh, always and uh, and it, a year after I picked up and yeah I just never I never had you a never corporate looked job. back yeah you never had a corporate job yeah. and when you told your parents I'm gonna like I got my master's but now I want to make videos what did they mm. say they were supportive you know my parents spoiled us which is a, a, a hard lesson that they've learned now that they shouldn't have spoiled us they should definitely should have. Uh, let us do some some work you yeah, know? yeah. It, it, i think all parents at that generation were like that like now we know like if you want independent children give them independence if you exactly. want responsible children give them responsibility yes yes and so when they first found out about the videos they were completely supportive about me taking a break and focusing after a year, a year passed by and my mom's like let's go yalla ba come with me because she, she she's a technical insurance uh, she's an insurance broker and so she has her own uh, company and she's like yalla get dressed tomorrow you're, you're uh, coming to work with coming me. to yeah. work with me and so i go the next day i go to work i arrive at 12 p.m because i'm still getting used to that Sleeping corporate in, job yeah. you know and then at 1 p.m i go to her and i'm like when is lunch because uh, i need <laughs> i need yeah. my lunch when is the break <laughs> And then I go to her an hour later and I'm like, where do I apply for her? holidays? She yeah, she's like, out. what? Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and then the funniest thing happened. The second day I received the email for my first job as an influencer. And it, it just never stopped since then. So I, ha I had a, a you had day, one, one day. day. Well, actually, not even a day. You started, <laughs> you started work at noon. Half that doesn't a, con a consist day. of a day. More than enough. If you were to work in corporate, what would you do? Oh... I I don't know if that's considered corporate, but I wanted to be like a psychiatrist or a therapist. Oh, or, really? Or, yeah. Always loved listening to, to people to people and help them uh, feel better. I still do it with my I feel friends. you're very enlightened. Like you just like you have good center. You're like, I'm thinking about no expectations. Yeah. You know, comedy is the key to like longevity. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always like I made sure I understand that there is no specific equation for happiness. Like they teach, they teach you, at least Arab parents teach you that if you get married and have kids, you're happy. Um, when it's, it's a cycle. They truly, want you to go to school, yeah. get married, have children. Yeah. It's a system and yeah. you just fall think, within it. They think that this is, this equals happiness. When we've seen so many cases when like getting married does not make, make you happy. Mm. Getting kids does Doesn't not necessarily make you happy. Make you happy. And so um, I just focus on, as cheesy as it sounds, focus on, on what you have, like the good things. And if you're happy, you're winning. And, and um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I became very, very good at focusing on, on the positive. It's so important. Yeah, It's so important. So. so Arab culture, there's a lot of quirky things about Arab culture. Yeah. So tell me some observations that you have about Arab culture that no other culture in the world has. They care too much about people, like what people think of them and stuff. That is so true. It's 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 so annoying. Who's your favorite person to impersonate like, or character to like go into? Mm, I love my Emirati character. Because, Yalla, go. Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah. I want to order a coffee. I want to go to a cafe. <laughs> I want to. What do you got? Hello, Allah. It's Hakim Hassani. Have a good coffee. Why you come? <laughs> okay. And to translate for the audience that doesn't speak Arabic, just explain what you just said. I just I just said, uh, oh, how do you explain for that way? Come. You see, I this is why I don't put subtitles on my videos. You can't. You can't translate it. Yeah, I get so many people asking me to put subtitles on my videos, and I'm like, it's so difficult because it's like so cultural, the jokes. Um, Very funny. Yeah, Very yeah. funny. Thank you. Uh, American foreign actor that you could impersonate or go into character about? Mm. I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not very good at impersonating real people. Like I yeah. impersonate 
You make fun of like, yeah. Yeah, I, I can impersonate a dialect and, and, and mannerisms and stuff of original characters from that specific country. You know what I mean? So funny. But yeah, I, uh, um, is there anybody? No, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not like a what, what, impressionist. Yeah, not impressionist. Yeah, but yeah, I thought yeah. like, I see you going, you, you, you do dialects on characters yeah. and I'm just in stitches laughing so thank hard. You. Thank you. Thank when you. And, Thank you for being on the show today. Of course. I, I love hearing your story. I continue to be a fan of your work. Thank you. You make people laugh, and that is a gift. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Of course. My pleasure. <laughs>